You're in tune to Out of Lives. www.outoflives.net You can't handle the truth! Hello and welcome to the Out of Lives podcast number 52. I am this week's host, Ross, and I'm joined by the mini hand himself. It's Dave Wyatt. Thank God, mini hand. All right, okay. By Jabba the Hutt, Scott Sedman. Hello. Gloop, 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 gloop. And the anal <laughs> devastator himself it is Kevin Tarn. What up, beautiful people. <laughs> Can we hear Scott's Jabba the Hutt impression again? <laughs> Go on, Scott. Gloop, 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 gloop. <laughs> <laughs> what cut of the film was that? <laughs> when he was underwater, maybe. Have you ever seen Star Wars? Yeah, I can't. even Star Wars, bro. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll move on, and traditionally, we start things off with our highlights of the week. So, we'll start with the said Meister himself, Scott. What has been your highlight of the week? Uh, it has been Digimon Story, Cyber Sleuth. Um, still playing that game. I'm over 40 hours into it now. And it's just a really good JRPG. And it's addicting. And I love it so much. What so platform is that on? Uh, PlayStation 4 and Vita. Uh, but I'm playing it on the Vita. And uh, that's about it, really. It's, it's not been a very interesting a week. Shite highlight, really, hasn't it? Oh, oh <laughs> okay. Okay, right, Kev, what's yours? Um, so mine's even shit. My highlight of the week's been Assassin's Creed Unity. Thanks for that pound, Dave, oh, really? by the way. Yo, you're welcome. <laughs> so, I got, do you, you know got what? That, actually, I meant. Do you know what? Unity isn't as bad as everyone banged on about. The parkour yeah, no, system, in, it's no. not. The parkour system is amazing. It's so much better than like the previous titles. The way you can now like get down off a building easily without having to like face plant the concrete. It's amazing. Wait, I'm not. I'm not going to disagree with you. Now, imagine it is like that when it first released. It yeah, no, because like I'm like two years behind. It probably fixed all the bugs that were wrong with it in the first place. But still, even though like Black Flag was a really good game in its own right, I think the thing it lacked was like the buildings and like the rooftop surfing. Yeah, and going back to Unity now and playing that, it's really cool. And it's got all that verticality and it's got all the landmarks. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, but that map is just so crowded and it's all crap. All of it's crap. There's like four or five good things on the map worth going to do, and it's surrounded by so like chests that you have to use social media to unlock, and just loads of wank. I've not like, come across that yet. In all honesty, I've just been doing some of the side missions. Like um, there was one point where you had to unlock, upgrade a building so you earn more money. Yeah, I've noticed. The, I noticed there's traffic. a lot of fucking in-depth character building in it now, which has confused me. But apart from that, I mean. It looks really beautiful as well. The graphics on it are absolutely amazing. There was even one point where I was on some of the rooftops and I was looking out across like the valley, and it, I got that moment of uncanny valley where everything just looked real for a split second. It's such a beautiful game. Have you like played the it. next one? You what? Sorry. Have you played the next one? No, I've still. That's why I went to Unity first because I wanted to play Syndicate. Then I thought, now nah, go with Unity because everybody says Syndicate's better. So I thought I'd do the shit one first, then go to the good one. But I'm enjoying Unity. <laughs> Well, I, I've only maybe four hours into Syndicate, but I really like Syndicate a lot more than what I did Unity. Does it look as good as Unity? Yes, it's a lot more... As Dave pointed out, you recognise a lot more. I found in Unity you were just sort of wandering the streets and they looked the same and there wasn't... You know, it, it didn't feel as if it had that much charm or character to it. Yeah. Whereas the streets of London really, really... You know, you can recognise them. You can... You know whereabouts you are. You recognise landmarks so you can actually work without the map. Um, I suppose if we were French, then it would be the way round. Well, I'm not English, so... Oh! Oh, snap, you're British. I <laughs> feel like Scott acted like it's all offended. He's not British. <laughs> oh! Get off the podcast, then. Um, Dave, what, what's your highlight? Uh, it's been a really uneventful week I moved <laughs> uh, not much happened really <laughs> didn't you move house isn't that a highlight yeah. Well, I moved, yeah I moved out I got engaged oh there we go <laughs> oh I, I played a really good game with Grand Theft Auto yeah we did shame we didn't win anything <laughs> oh, piss off mate. <laughs> that really annoyed me earlier. I was on a roll last night All right, you can just fucking do it no I got engaged this week that's probably the highlight of the week. Congratulations, Dave. Yeah, yeah congrats. Because miserations do misses. Yeah. 
Paul, she Paul finally Young. has her finger in your ring. <laughs> and, see, he wishes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> that was a celebration, yeah. Well, moving swiftly oh. on, my highlight of the week was um probably Rocket League. Wasn't that? Oh, oh my god! If it's not that. Football Manager, it's Rocket League. I know. I just like football games or balls. But, um, yeah, not like, one. you know, I know it's been out in PS4 forever, but, you know, this is my first taste of it, um, and I absolutely love it. It's just so addictive, so good, so much fun. Before I was recording this podcast, I was online playing it with a few of the Duck Hunters, and it's just amazing fun. From what I've you seen of your game clips, got to say you're quite good as well. Yeah, I've been practising a lot. Like, I'll tell you what it is, it's my wife like loves it as well and it's split screen couch co-op whatever so when I get in from work or she gets in from work she's like stick on a couple of games an hour later we're still playing <laughs> you know like it's just it's one of those it games is, it's you, very, can't you can pick down. it up and play can't you the yeah. games are over so fast that if you've got a spare 20 minutes or half hour you can just bash out a couple of games yes and, the more you play it, the better at it you get. You anticipate a lot more. You know where to move into space. You know when to sit back. You, you know, you, you really do start to... Yeah, I had to go on it around my mates on his PC and I was playing for about an hour and I couldn't get the timing down at all. You've got to get such perfect timing for when you leap off the ground to do a jump or a backflip to hit the ball. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, you definitely do. And, you know, even still you mess up or you miss it or you drive around the ball, what Scott was doing, just entirely not touching the ball. <laughs> um, I was you know, there. Like, That's what I was. <laughs> but you know like I've, I don't remember such a fun online sports game to be honest with you like sure there's some FIFA, FIFA fans fan. that would hang you right now yeah no I, I get that but I'll tell you what like, I heard I think it was Daniel Krupa said that on the IGN UK podcast he said it's more like football more like football than FIFA and he's right mm. because you're saying I'm, I'm centering it I'm crossing it and you know someone's crossing it where you roughly have to be. You know, it's yeah. not just tap of a button and it automatically goes to a player or chips over someone. You literally have to think about where in the ball you're hitting for, yeah. for the spin and everything. It's 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 really good. It's a great Plus representation. Plus it's got those um it's got the same sort of rocket cars that you get in FIFA, so Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. you know, that's what FIFA's been lacking all these years is rocket cars. Who would have guessed it, you know what I mean? But yeah. I've yet to commit to it, but I, I do want to get it. But I know that Division's coming out next week, and I'm absolutely sold on that. Well, so. see, the thing is, is about the Division coming out next week is this will be my secondary game because mm. the Division, where it could get heavy or you, you know, you're waiting for something to come online, I can literally jump on that for five or ten minutes. You know, while I'm waiting for something. Yeah, it makes sense. So yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't know about you, but when I'm about to invest in a big title. Uh, I need something secondary, and that's been FIFA for a long time, where I can just jump in and play a game. But now I'll, I think Rocket League will be my go-to. I usually use my handhelds for that, but yeah, yeah. Well, that's like my wiener. That's what my uh, my <laughs> that's what toilet for. rolls for. Oh god, damn it! My toilet roll is not for that. It's for pooping. Um, no, like I, I play. Just... Out, right? So we, we asked Scott. Like <sighs> Scott's got a toilet roll sitting beside him, and he's on camera right now. And then um, you know he's a student. Living in student halls, like I am living in student halls. Guest. Oh, sorry, you're living in a flat, whatever, right? Um, but basically, Scott says it's for pooping. So we're now trying to establish: does he have an actual toilet in his room? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's for pooping. I keep it on my desk. So. Yeah, why do you keep it in your desk? Oh, it's a long story. It's a lot. It's a lot <laughs> of like, toilet is roll. It, is you need to keep story? your own toilet roll. People steal your to- toilet roll. No, like it just it goes too quickly in a house shared between five people. So you have your emergency stash of toilet roll. How many toilets do you have? One. Between five people? Yeah. Oh, that must get messy. Well yeah. Well they don't all go at the same time, can <laughs> 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 Three of us in the bathtub. Anyway. <laughs> oh, oh yeah well you can always piss in the sink that's always a backup um, but anyway like, we'll move on uh, and we'll think we'll go into the download the download so we're all bringing two stories to the table and today some uh, mighty news got announced about a delay so Scott we'll go to you uh, yeah it's been reported that uh, one of the EA big dogs uh, has said that Mass Effect Andromeda is now not coming in 2016. It will be in Q1 2017, which is kind of in line with what we heard when they announced their uh, earnings call, where there was like um, Titanfall 2, Mass Effect, and was it Titanfall? No, wait, I just said that. Uh, FIFA would all be here before 
Q1 next year. So they didn't specifically say it was 2016 it was coming out, so it's all good. I didn't, I didn't even realise it was out this year, to be honest. Yeah, I think at the VGAs they said it was going to be thingy, but obviously at the earnings call they didn't say it was 2016, so I think they've just been preparing everyone for a 2016. When I heard about this, I was trying to think, is there any big RPGs that are coming out this year at the same time? Because maybe they're moving it for that reason. Final Fantasy Fifteen's out this year, isn't it? Mm, it's meant to well, be. Well, it's not wait, they announced yeah, the release date. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, no. there's an event coming, isn't there, that uh, Greg Miller and... Uh, can't remember the other guy's name. Oh, Tim Gettys are hosting, and then that's when they're announcing the release date. They've been talking about it. But I don't think they have announced the release date for it yet. No, but I mean, I, I'm not super disappointed because we've got a lot of games coming out this year that I'm looking forward to anyway. Um, but it would have been division, nice to play it. hype. Mm, I'm nice to me. I'll probably still be on the division by then. Yeah. Oh, like, I hope so. I hope that game's got longevity. Long yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Longevity. That's the budget. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Back you. Longevity. Long I prefer that word. Mm. Longevity. <laughs> longevity. Nah, oh. I mean, it's exciting stuff. Right, if, if the game needs to work, then I'm all for it. I mean, look at Uncharted 4. That just got another delay as well. But that's yeah. not too easy. But, you know. If a game needs to be delayed, it needs to be delayed. I seem to be one of those random people that like, I don't, I didn't enjoy any of the Mass Effect, and I tried so hard. I played one, <laughs> and it, it it was hard. Like it was hard to get into because by the time I played it, it was uh, it'd been out for a few years. It was it dated really quickly. I thought. Um. Yeah, Mass Effect one is pretty. And then everyone said, "Oh no, don't go. You know, carry on. Play the second one. You, that one's really good." I played that, and I got to the end of that one, and again, I just thought that. Nah. So I completed one and two, and it's just. just and I like RPGs, and I like sort of space operas, so fuck knows what that was about. Yeah, I, um, like, a year or two ago, maybe two years ago, I tried playing Mass Effect 2, and I played it for, I push, tried to push through it for about four or five hours, and I just couldn't get into it. It just, see, it was, there was too much. It's like the reason I don't play Fallout. There's just too much to do. I don't mind it. It's, I like the giant games. I just found it... Um, I don't know. I like Mass Effect is more linear than Fallout. It's not open world. It, like you do have like you do end up following one quest. Yeah, there are side quests, but there's not as many as Fallout where you can go and discover them at your own pace and all that. Thing is, sometimes I take a break away from games for say like three, four weeks, and then mm-hmm. I go back to them. And if I don't know what I'm doing again, I'm like, oh fuck this, I can't be bothered to learn again. Then yeah. I just leave it. That's fair. But I mean, Mass Effect has always been pretty simple. At least I thought so. Anyway, I like I loved Mass Effect too, and I enjoyed three for the most part. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I enjoyed three up until the end. The ending was just a letdown. That's all. It's always a bad. A good, it's always a good game. Um, but yeah, I'm not super disappointed by this news. Um, like because I want it to be good. I don't know how or what. It just it just you know take your time here. Take your time. Um, so what's your second bit of news? Uh, my second bit of news is uh, Disney have announced that there's going to be a Big Hero 6 TV show. Uh, it's coming out next year, and it's going to be awesome. Well, I don't know. What's that on Disney XD? Disney XD, yeah. It's premiering on Disney They're getting XD. quite a few big shows now, aren't they? They've got Star Wars. They're getting that. Seems to be like... I know a lot of adults watch that Star Wars... Um, Rebels. Rebels. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of adults watch that, so who knows? It could be good. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. I mean, the the the, the Big Hero Six film was uh, incredibly amazing. I mean, it won an Oscar for God's sake. Yeah, um, I didn't realize it won an Oscar. Yeah, I, I really, I really do. Um, I really do love it. It's it's one of my favorite. It was really good. I, I went along to see that in the movies. I didn't expect much to be honest. Like I'd seen a couple of adverts, but I weren't hyped or anything. And I came out. Yeah, I loved it. I just liked um, Betamax. Is it Betamax? I was called Betamax. Betamax. Baymax I always call him Betamax as well. <laughs> but I like his... <laughs> That's the one. Kevin, have you even seen the movie? <laughs> Fucking amateurs. Have you even seen the movie, Kevin? I saw God. it once. Nah, I, I, I love it. I actually... Um, there's a Baymax pop over there, but I don't know if you can see it well. Um, and I'm back. Hey, hey. welcome back, Ross. What'd you hey. got? Hey, sorry about that. I had uh, some Skype issues. Uh, but anyway, right, so we'll move on with the news stories and Dave, we'll start with your first exciting part of news, bit of news even. Mine's not massively exciting unless you're a Pokey fan, uh-huh. <laughs> which I am. Uh, yeah, so, um, although it leaked, which I think took a bit of the sting out of its tail, Pokemon Sun and Moon had been announced for late 2016 for Nintendo 3DS. Which means we're going to have another 200 Pokemon that I don't know. It's fine. There's like there's like seven hundred odd now, but it's That's what I mean. I only know the first hundred and fifty. 
Well, you know that like, you should know the first 151 because Muse is still part of that, guys. Come on, come on. All oh, right, yeah, okay, 151. On. You so we have bastard. <laughs> we have no release date, but they said it'll be coming holiday this year. So that's any time really from September, October to Christmas. Christmas time is going to be the perfect time. And everyone's Christmas present wish list. I I had a weird like conspiracy theory talk with some friends of mine. Um, like. The NX is said to be launching the handheld version of the NX this year, and is the reason they didn't announce like a complete firm date because like they can be like, yes, yeah, Sun and Moon is coming to 3DS, but it's also going to be on our new handheld NX come holiday this year, and then the bundle the NX with the Pokemon game because I'll sell it. That's very true, yeah. Possibly. Uh, and that's what I was thinking. Have they announced what consoles it's going to be. Released they have announced it? it is going to be on 3DS. Oh, okay. But they can always add another console. Zelda uh, Twilight Princess was on GameCube and Wii. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Uh, there's no way they wouldn't have done it on the 3DS. Oh, no. The, God, no. Um, you know, the, the, they've got the, the fans there already. But pff, I'm still not sold that we'll see anything of the NX this year, to be honest. We, we've barely heard anything about it, and it's March. Yeah, but they're waiting for free, free, obviously. But would they release it in the same year? No, exactly. they're not like how, how the early do you is... hear about these consoles before they come out? Like PlayStation Four and Xbox One, I I felt we heard about them for years in advance before they came. Yeah. Out. The thing is, uh, like the rumor is that they're launching the handheld part of the console this year, and then the console version will follow next year. I'm just trying to remember as well. Wasn't Wii U announced in the same year as released? I'm not sure. At E3, I remember it being announced at E3, and I think it came out later that year. I'm not 100 percent on that. Uh, oh, yeah, the Wii U was announced in 2011, head. and it launched uh, 2012. Right, okay. But still, it, I know they've announced it, but we've seen nothing mm, about it. Very true. Really, let's, we don't know much. We don't even know what it is. We don't know if it's a hand... Uh, I don't know if it's, it's a... Uh, they're so cryptic with what, what they're saying. Yeah. Is, but, I mean, there's a Nintendo Direct on Monday? Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's tomorrow. The Nintendo Thursday. Direct's tomorrow. Oh, it's so, tomorrow. Thursday Tomorrow for us. We're recording on Wednesday. So it so. will have been yesterday for when you're listening to this. Yeah. So maybe we will know then, but I don't know. I I, I don't know if they've already said they're not going to talk about NX. Yeah. No, I mean, as as for Pokemon going on the hopefully NX, maybe maybe these two will go on the 3ds and then the third one. Yeah, as that's a possibility. Thought, you know. But um, sticking with the Pokemon theme quickly, don't forget that if you have got Pokemon, you can download Celebi this week. Celebi uh, this month. Yeah. What is Holy Celebi? But, Isn't that Doomy Celery? No, Celebi is the legendary Pokemon they're giving away. So. Oh, okay. So grab that from. You don't even have to go to a shop to get that one. You can just download it from the. <laughs> oh, can you? You don't have to go to game for yeah. it. Yeah. No, no, I got it. I got both from this morning. Or if you want celery, go to your celery. local Asda. Indeed. Or Tesco. Or <laughs> yeah. Sainsbury's. Fuck off. Or Morrison's. Fuck off, Kev. Um, yeah, so. That's that. Okay. Right. Um, the three Pokemon news. The Pokemons. We regret to inform our avid listeners of the Out of Lives podcast that Ross Miller has been permanently <laughs> So he's trying to say this podcast is a shitstorm this week. It has so been Ross plagued. We have GTA. been cursed. This is what happens when we do not have Francis on. I blame Kev. I mean, they've managed to deal without Ross for three weeks. They can deal one more week. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he will. Be, he will return. The king will cometh and prey upon the land. I don't know, but I do know. Dev has one more story for us this week. We do. Yeah, there is an interesting tweet this week from Stephen King, as he announces Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey will star in the Dark Tower movie, and the hype is on. Right. I wanted to ask you about this because I went on Twitter and I saw this blowing up and I don't have the foggiest what Dark Tower is. So if you could give me a synopsis. <laughs> people wait, rock. wait. Let me, give, let me give you a synopsis to an eight book series, shall I? No, it's not. It, honestly, like we would be here. All, it's it's so got to be that hard. Oh, it is, honestly. Stephen King's been writing this series of books since he was... Actually, I've got a quote here. When you think about it, I started these stories as a senior in college. Now, Stephen King is not a young man now, okay? And he only finished the last book uh, five years ago, I think. Well, let's work on the assumption that the first film will be the first book. No, no, he's... I've, no, they're mixing all of them together, aren't See, they? See, the thing is that... this The bit that worries me is they're only making one movie to begin with, and they will 
decide from that one movie whether or not they'll make more. Well, can I have a general overview then? Can I twist your arm for that? Yes, you can. Right. So, so Idris Elba is going to be starring as the uh, main character, uh, Roland uh, Dischain, I think you pronounce it. Um, and he's, oh, it's, it's really hard to explain, Kev. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so he's You're really struggling. He's, he's a character that's known as the Gunslinger, and um, it it starts off. You're not entirely sure whether you're seeing the future or the afterlife or whatever, but but basically, this book is at the center of all of Stephen King's novels. So it, it links them all together. You've got characters for each one crossing between worlds. And it's just, the, it's just a serious head fuck, to be honest. Like, like if you... <laughs> so it, I'm none the wiser. <laughs> no, so this is, this is just him following the adventure of how he gets to the Dark Tower. I mean, I can't see how they're going to film this in the movie. One of the books is about them trying to save a, a town or a village from uh, the wolves, they're called. The wolves of the Calla, they're called. And they are robot wolves that are dressed like Doctor Doom and it says Doctor Doom like this is this is, dressed like Doctor Doom doing wielding lightsabers and carrying explosive snitches from Harry Potter wow like that's that's a legitimate character in the book so <laughs> okay so, so this is like yeah. a sci-fi supernatural yeah there's, it's, there's it's parts a, of it, an amalgamation of genres yeah, it's, there's it's parts a, of it set in like a, a sort of medieval type kingdom there's another part set in a, in a post-apocalyptic wasteland uh, there's this is why this is why i'm I'm still quite surprised now they're doing one movie originally uh, it had ron howard uh, attached he was backing it and he was gonna do it as uh, three different movies and a sort of TV series that bridges the gap in between. Oh, okay. Because some of the novels, I mean, there's a whole novel where it's pretty much just a, a game of riddles between a, a talking train and the main characters. And yeah, so that's not going to make a very good film. So they was going to have a TV show to do those parts. Um, but now they're doing one movie and it's um, part of the middle of the story. I just, I just don't know. Is Sony the ones who are making this movie? Um, not I can't sure. remember if it's Cerny or not because if it's Cerny, I'm a lot more worried than I should be. I don't. Know. I, I'm I'm happy it's getting made. Uh, it's awesome. I'm just, I'm just very. I just. I would never put this down as a book that you could you could adapt into a movie. I want to know if you can't explain the thing how they're going to sell it to the general public. Exactly. <laughs> I've, exactly. I, it, it it all depends on how they adapt it. Like, I mean, are they gonna go their own direction with it? I mean, Stephen King's obviously involved with it, so you might just be like, "Look, here are the key points that I need you to hit in this movie." I fuck knows what they're gonna do, to be honest. But what's interesting is the main character in the book is a um a white character, and obviously Idris Elba. If anyone's seen him, is not. Um, so and. But one of the characters is incredibly racist in the book, and she plays a black lady that that hates Roland for being white. So they're going to have to change bits like that. And I, I don't know. I think they will. Oh, I think they're going to have well, to just leave it out to be a bit PC. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, you do she see could hate him for racism. being black. Yeah, you do see that racism in films. I mean, you see it in Django, don't you? Mm. Uh, Django and Chain and things like that. I just, I don't know. It, it, I still think it's going to be. They're going to have to change a lot to get it on the big screen. I can't imagine them getting the rights to use explosive snitches. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm guessing this is I going to be I can't see like... them getting the rights to use lightsabers. And... Yeah, it's just going to be like a shell, isn't it, of what the book well, is? Well, energy swords can be lightsabers, you know what I mean? They don't yeah, have to be... Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's whole parts of the book that are set in uh, The Wizard of the Oz. Well, Wars it's going to run into the same problems that Steven Spielberg is with Ready Player One, if you think about it. Yes, it, exactly the same. I, I really... Can't see him. I'm hoping with Ready Player One that he gets some sort of deal with these studios to use like Ferris Bueller and stuff in the actual um, movie. The thing is, Steven Spielberg is out of everyone is possibly the man who can do that just yeah. because of his name and his track record at the box office. You know what I mean? He gives them faith, like, like oh, look at Steven Spielberg. He wants to use this. It's like Steven Spielberg isn't going to misuse this property. And like people are, like the fans of the book know that that's a vital part of the book. It's just, hmm. I don't know. I think Steven Spielberg will probably get away with most of it, and if not, they can adapt around it to points. But I think where it needs it, 
I think Steven Spielberg yeah. will probably do it. It'd be interesting to see how they try and cut a trailer together for it. Um, talking of trailers, the uh, Finding Dory trailer has been released. So the first official trailer has dropped for Finding Dory. Uh, well, it's the second trailer, but the first one that's got, Yeah, it was more of a tease, uh, the first one, wasn't yeah. it? And I've been looking forward to seeing the direction they'd go with this, but if I'm honest with you, I'm a bit disappointed with this trailer because they seem to be using the same sort of scenarios out of the first film. Like, you saw the um, the ocean current bit where they're with the turtles the, again. Yeah. Uh, Dory was stuck in a fish tank, just like Nemo was in the first film. They seem to be taking the same sort of scenarios and reusing them. I'm just hoping that they find some humour in it, because I really did like the end bit, you know, with the octopus, where he's doing like that ninja stuff. Oh, that, was, yeah. that was pretty yeah, and funny. It, and he presses the button as if it was saying... Yeah, he um, quickly switches it off again. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I I, I I agree. Like I thought the same thing when I was watching it. I'm hoping that's literally just for the trailer. Like I feel that to be to be safe, they're you know <laughs> holding stuff back. Yeah, not just holding stuff back, but just showing people. Oh, look, this is the Finding Nemo film. That yeah, I suppose they want to remind you know. people what happened in the first film and try and remind people of the characters they loved in the first film. Because I mean, it's been uh, well over ten years now, hasn't it? When was Finding Nemo? Two thousand three. Yeah, it's I, I actually don't remember when it was. But um, no, I I enjoyed the trailer. I thought the trailer was quite funny. I yeah, probably I've I've seen Finding Nemo a god awful amount of times because uh, I used to babysit my niece uh, nephew, and that's all he would watch. Like all he would watch. To be fair, I'm not the biggest animated fan, but that's one of those movies that whenever it's on, I'll watch it as well. It's so good. Yeah. So did yeah. you did you see it, Scott? I've seen Finding Nemo. I haven't watched the trailer for Finding Dory. I just don't care. I haven't <laughs> seen the teaser for it either. I'm I'm not really into watching trailers and teasers anymore, as you guys know. So I kind of like it's. I haven't even actively tried to avoid this one. It's just it's not been in my news feed really. I don't, or I don't know my... how you're gonna do that. I, that would drive me nuts. Knowing I'm that, easily like knowing there's a trailer out and it's like everybody's watching it and talking about it. And I just can't. I think the re- the real test is gonna come with Civil War. Uh, the, the last trailer for that which yeah but whenever it's a big film editor. like that especially I mean the, the the teaser trailer you ended up watching in the end didn't you you always say oh, that wasn't my it. fault oh, I'm not going to watch it and then you're like yeah I'll watch it that wasn't my fault my friend had it on when I walked into his room so oh, I just yeah. walked over to the screen and started watching it yeah <laughs> yeah at that point I accepted defeat but <laughs> also it was on when I watched Deadpool as well so I saw it again then but I ain't actually gone and watched it myself See, this is it. I, I mean it, I think it's very hard to avoid trailers uh, now, when you see them all over the TV and all over the... I don't watch TV, do you? Oh, well, that's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the thing is, the amount, like, now that I have to pay for cinema, I don't go often. Um, So it's like, I, the only time I've been this year, really, is Deadpool, I think. I think I saw something else, but I can't remember what it was. Um, And obviously Deadpool had a trailer for it, but, like, the next film I'm probably going to go pay to see is Civil War. And when I say appear to see, it doesn't mean I'm t- pirating the movies, people. Um, it's just I don't see them until they're on Blu-ray. Like, I didn't see Spectre last year. Still haven't seen Spectre. Least, oh, you see, I was going to say, I wonder what you thought. I've seen I parts of it. Though. I've, I've started watching it. Mm. started watching it. I liked it. It's a good film. I, I don't see what people are complaining about, but then again, I'm about 30 minutes into the movie. Yeah, it's just a fun film. I mean, I don't know why people think James Bond's anything other than a, a, a stupid action film, really, let's be honest. I know some of the other ones went a bit darker with it, but there's about 20 films where it's um, fun and, well, not 20 films, but 18 films where it's fun and two films where it's it's super serious, so, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. So well, what's your other piece of news? So my other piece of news. Of course, the Oscars were this week, and I thought it'd be silly of us not to at least discuss it. So what I'll do is I'll run through some of the winners, and then you guys can talk about the winners or who should have won and what you think of them. Yeah, um, that's fine. So to begin with, Mad Max Fury Road picked up five Oscars, all in the technical field, which included sound editing, sound mixing, makeup, production design, and costume design. Uh, best animated feature was Inside Out. Best Cinematography went to Emmanuel Lubezki for The Revenant. Uh, Best Supporting Actress, Alicia Vikander for The Danish Girl. Best Supporting Actor was Mark Rylance for Bridge of Spies. 
Best actress was Brie Larson with um, Room. Room, yeah. yeah. Uh, best actor was Leonardo DiCaprio for The Revenant. Uh, Who the hell is Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, I know, right? Oh, no, I'm surprised such an unknown would get... Romeo from Romeo and Juliet, you know that guy? Oh, I wonder what he's about to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> best director went to Alexandro Inaratu for The Revenant. And best picture went to Spotlight. Of course, there were a load of other winners now, but those are the ones that stick out, so... Did you guys watch it? What did you think of the winners? Who do you think should have won? I, wa- I watched it, yeah. So what did you think of it all? Uh, I liked Chris Rock's opening monologue, and then after that it kind of went a bit downhill with his, like, it was basically the same thing over and over again, beating the dead horse. Um, apart from the Girl Scout cookie thing. The Girl Scout cookie. I remember when Chris Rock used to be funny. <laughs> Dogma. Mm. Mm. Dogma. Oh, that was an awesome film. Fucking great movie. Um, the one thing... I'm not happy about is Inarato winning Best Director. Uh, George Miller, which I'm hoping for. Yeah, George yeah. Miller really should have won that. Thing is, I think they sort of copped out and gave uh, Mad Max all like the technical stuff. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, did you see him when uh, the costume design won and he, like, like he just staring her down? I don't know if you've seen it. Like, no, I've not seen Inarato, that. it. Like, she's coming out on stage and Inarato's just like. The Revenant should have won. <laughs> Why is my film not oh, winning all these on. awards? Yeah, ah. the, the costume design in Mad Max was yeah, really especially the yeah, bad guy. All of them, like every character, oh, oh, was so like it, interesting. You, you believed it was that world, yeah, and that's through yeah. costume design and everything. No, I think Mad Max definitely deserved um, all the awards it got. The sound was amazing. Oh, completely. The agree. visuals were amazing. I like the film is it's a really great film. I mean, I don't think it would have won best screenplay. It's got about five words. <laughs> So, you know, uh, yeah, it definitely deserved all the technical ones, to be honest. Yeah, I was also surprised that Best Supporting Actor was Mark Rylance from Bridge of Spies. Did you guys see Bridge of Spies this year? No, I I did not see it. I mean, his performance was good. It was very subtle. But I think a lot of people said Tom Hardy outacted Leonardo DiCaprio in The Revenant, which I'm, mm, I'd say they were on equal pegging. But I thought he would have got it for Best Supporting. I think... um, I think Tom Hardy is in every film at the minute, so like, yeah. I don't think they're, I don't think they're worried about giving him an Oscar this year. He can have one. <laughs> but that's what everybody said about Leonardo DiCaprio, and then he waited for like twenty years. Mm. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about like because like I've, I've only seen half the Revenant because I like, I found it a bit. bit it's a very ago. slow bird. Yeah, and I wasn't in the mood, and I was a bit tired. I ended up turning it off. I will start it from the beginning when I watch it next time. Yeah, but um. I wouldn't even say it was Leonardo DiCaprio's best performance he's ever done. It's not. No, it, hands honest. down, it's not. I, I like there's like Wolf of Wall Street. No, his best Django. performance was uh, the Aviator. I think. Uh, I think Wolf's his best performance. But then again, I just I just love Wolf of Wall so Street through and through. Do you think he literally only got that because it's just a long time coming? Yeah, I, I think, think so. due to the other nominations as well this year, like the like yeah, Matt Damon was really good in the Martian. But it's Matt Damon. He's he's great. Like you know what I mean. Like there wasn't any like there wasn't any mind blowing performances this year for best actor. And I think just obviously Leo really wanted an Oscar. And I think obviously I think the Oscar was feeling the pressure as well from everyone. Yeah, especially after he didn't win it for Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Though, I find the whole Oscars thing just a bit of a joke. To be honest, why is that? Because it it just seems so up itself. Like. It makes out it's like I get it's a big deal and like winning an Oscar is a big deal. Like don't get me wrong, but it's so overblown. Like especially in the states, it's all over the TV. Yeah, it's turned into like this big event. Since since having a baby, I watch a lot of daytime TV, and all I saw this week was fucking Oscars. This who's wearing what to the Oscars? Who's going to the Oscars? Who's going with who to the Oscars? Look what this person did at the Oscars. Like fuck off. I'm in your boat now, Dave. I used to love it. I used, like I used to love being like st- like staying up and watching. It. I stayed up and watched it. I was like this. I didn't even think it was that great of a show, to be honest. Like normally, I'm like I'm into I'm entertained all the way through, but I want this time maybe because I was really really tired by by like what was it five in the morning? I think it finished. Yeah, I, something, something. Is so, it, I mean, what time does it start? What time does it finish? Does it need? It to be started at half one. So does it need to be that long. It was yeah, it's four hours, wasn't it? It, it, it was it was a rough. It was a rough watch, but that could have just been me tired. Um, I don't know. I, I'm. It's an Academy Awards. It's nice to see them recognizing stuff. Inaratu was the first director to win three times in a row. Um, three. 
Is it three or is it two? I think it's two, isn't it? Just bird mother. Maybe two. Yeah. Uh, well, he's won it in a row. I don't know if it's three. No, it's I don't two, know if it's I think. two. <laughs> but I like uh, don't get me wrong. The guy seems like he knows. Like, he's a competent director. Obviously, he can get the performances that he wants. He knows what he wants with his shots. Um, Birdman and The Revenant are well-made films. Films I don't enjoy personally. This is the other thing: is a lot of the films that they go up, I I don't watch or I don't see. Or uh, I agree with. Like I think the best thing was Revenant not winning Best Picture. Yeah, but uh, I, I love was Spotlight a bit of a winning News Fest as well. I love Spotlight. I thought it was a really good movie, but I also wish the Big Short won. I think I think Big Big Short should have won Best no, Picture. No, Max should have. Mm, yeah, but it was never going to win no. Best Picture. No, I loved I loved Mad Max, but like I think Mad Max appeals to a much smaller demographic than a lot of the other films. I disagree. It makes more like I wouldn't go and watch. I wouldn't go and watch. Um, you know. My mum wouldn't watch Mad Max, but she'd probably watch all the other ones. Yeah, but the people who actually go out and see these movies, Mad Max won't make. But they're not, they're not the people. The they're not the people who vote on the Oscars. Yeah, I know, but I'm just the saying. Oscars is Academy Awards for people in the industry, and that's why Mad Max swept up with the technical side because everyone in the industry is like, yeah, this is like this is obviously well put together. Like it took technically, but like but the best picture doesn't look for stuff like that. It's it's like the whole package. It's like it needs to be emotional and. Like they prefer true story and stuff like that. It's it's really weird when you look at the Oscars, but I mean it's changing now anyway. So next year will be an interesting year to watch. So before we go on with the final bit of news, we've got this week's releases with the indie queen herself, Lucy. Enjoy. Hi everyone, it's Lucy here again to tell you about this week's indie game releases. There's not a lot out this week, but I'll run through them quickly as to just in case there's anything you overlook that might interest you. So first up is Prison Architect, which popped up on the Xbox One Games Preview program this week. Prison Architect is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a management sim that has you designing and running the most efficient prison as possible. Uh, It was in Steam Early Access for some time, but it got a full release on PC not long ago. And the full version is coming to both Xbox One and PS4 later this summer. But right now you can play an early build of it for £19.99 via the Games Preview program. You can also download a free trial to try it out before you commit that hard-earned cash as well. Next up is Action Henk. It's a cartoonish physics-based racer. That's out on Xbox One this Friday, the 4th of March. Um, If you're a PlayStation gamer, that'll also be out on PS4 next week on the 8th with a 30% discount for PS Plus subscribers. Because, of course, that lost out uh, to Broforce in the March Vote to Play poll. Which brings me on to the next game, which is Broforce. Most of you know that Broforce is an over-the-top action platformer where its characters parody um, 80s and 90s action films. That's available to download for free now for PS Plus subscribers until the end of the month as part of March's uh, Instant Games collection. Alakine's Gun, which is a third-person sandbox assassination game set in the Cold War, is out on PC, PS4 and Xbox One in North America for our American listeners out there. European listeners will have to wait until the 11th. Um, so if you can't wait to play Hitman out next week, and if you're in um, North America, you can pick Alakine's Gun up either digitally or physically. Right, both Gunscape and Ironcast are out on PS4 and Xbox One this week. The former is a Minecraft-esque world builder and first-person shooter hybrid, whilst the second is sort of a match-free puzzle game um, mixed with combat strategy. Um, but other than those, that's it for this week. Uh, I'll be back next week to tell you about games such as Cola, The Blues and Bullets Episode 2 and Knee Deep Episode 3. Or just check out my website, IndieMarathon.com, in the meantime. Until then, keep listening to Out of Lives. Thank you. Thanks for that, Lucy. So, let's get on with the news. Yes, and from the grave rises King Ross's news. So, it's not actually him. So Ross's news post this week uh, that he brought and then left as he died um, was there was a slight, uh, well, slight, there was a a Microsoft conference on Friday. Yes, tell me more. I think it was Friday. Anyway, who cares? Uh, And they've announced a couple of new features for the Xbox One, including uh, allowing you to buy 360 games on your Xbox One. Nice. Which Which is always handy. As long as the prices are good. (laughs) Well, well, I'm it's assuming the same this will be the yeah, this will be the backwards compatible games that are, are going to appear on the Xbox One store. I can't imagine you being able to buy Xbox 360 games 
for that you me. can't play. Yeah, you can't play on the Xbox One. Yeah, I understand one. that. I could be wrong. You know what they're like? Because the Xbox One store, they charge a premium on, uh, premium on everything you buy. So I'm just worried that when they put those 360 tiles on, they'll suddenly go up in price. Well, possibly, but... I think I mean, it'll be the same price they are on Air. I, I think they 360, be... because if it's not, then people will just go and buy yeah, exactly, them online. Yeah. Or well, you will anyway. Get them all on eBay for like five an hour anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice to have it digitally, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> not when you've only got a 500 gigabyte hard drive and I've got eight games on it and it's 96% full. Damn, Kev. Oh, man, I've got like four terabyte. You need to get on that shit. Oh, yeah, no. get a terabyte hard drive, bro. I just install stuff for fun. <laughs> <laughs> just piss off. All that me. porn. But yeah, that's available for Xbox One preview members now, I believe, and for it's not. everyone else in a couple of days. I tried it, still not working. I'm in Xbox preview menu, and I didn't remember, and I didn't notice it, but hey. Oh, well, I'm preview, and I tried it, and then Ross said it's not working yet. Well, you told me to press Y, and I actually believed you. <laughs> that was a reference <laughs> I played GTA last night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was I, I, what I wasn't was. playing. I was like, <laughs> but everybody else had to do something, it was always like, hold Y. Because it chucks you yeah. out. How do you use the handbrake in your car? You hold down white. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, that that's cool. That is it. Um, honestly, it is cool. And plus, that means when they announce games, will go like they can put up the uh, the backwards compat one as well. Like so, you can buy it. there you can just get it there and then instead of instead of having to go onto Xbox.com or Xbox 360 and down buy it and then download it. Yeah. So, so that's awesome. Uh, also, you can now broadcast your Xbox party chat over Twitch. Which is long due as well. A lot of people have been after that. I can't believe that's taken this long. Yeah. It's one of those features that Twitch streamers want because a lot of the time you go on Twitch, you know somebody streaming off Xbox because they'll just be talking to themselves like a mad person. Yeah. Um, it, it opens much better uh, streaming options. Um, I know like when, when Ross has done a couple of streamings with um, that weird bloke from the My Xbox and Me podcast. I don't know if you know him. <laughs> Nah, bit can't of a, sound familiar. Bit of a strange character. Huh? <laughs> um, Do you want to cut your promo now? <laughs> uh, he, you know, when they're playing together, you can only hear the strange one instead of Ross's dulcet, beautiful tones. So <laughs> that, that will change that um, for when that's streaming. So that's that's quite good. I can't believe this has taken this long. That to get to long this point, to though. sort out. Yeah, um, it's even made me think. Oh, now I'm, I'm more inclined to stream because the pit that puts me off about streaming on Twitch is. The talking to myself. Mm. Like, I know we pretty much do it every week. We just talk to... But we're talking to each other, so it's fine. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like, now, as opposed to just playing GTA, one of you could stream it and then all that discussion and stuff will be there and it'll be fun and then you could go and check yeah, it out. Because like, like, you... I've got the All account on mine. Like, I can stream on the All account. and we That's get... what I mean. And then it's then you've got the Out Loud people joining in and it'll be fun. It'll be... Hey, man, we need to do this tonight. Let's, let's play some GTA and stream that shit. <laughs> um... And lastly, uh, the last bit of interesting news from that uh, conference is that Phil Spencer has announced that they are planning to unify its PC and Xbox One gaming platforms into one ecosystem running universal Windows applications. Now, like, you could read a lot into that, but it could be something a bit more basic than it sounds. For so, instance, I took this as a, it's going to be like, the Xbox One isn't going anywhere, but they're probably in like maybe next year they're going to release a better version of the Xbox One. Yeah, now I mean they're talking about how they would like to make it so you can upgrade your Xbox One. And the only things. way they're going to do that is if they release a whole new system for you to be able yeah, to upgrade. Yeah, I I can't see I like because I, I mean there's, we're we're due a revision on the Xbox One system now. Like I can't remember how long it was after the first Xbox 360 come out. Three or four yeah. years, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, I do agree with you, David. I, I, we are due. I don't think it was three or four. I thought it was within two years of the first one coming out. They got they had the they had the elite within a year or something. Yeah, and that fixed a lot of the problems the original one had. But you know, <clears throat> we've not seen anything like that with the Xbox One, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was coming. I can't see it coming anytime soon. But but next year, though, that, I think next year will be right. I was thinking, like, if they did ever do something like that where they had an Xbox. Uh, an Xbox One where you could take components out and swatch them, swap them for upgrades. If they did a, uh, a deal where you could take your old Xbox One in, yeah, I think that's what it'll have to be. And maybe pay a bit extra and get the new one. That's something well, I'd that's, be willing to do. Yeah, you could then argue that why why bother? Why not just buy a gaming PC? Because it'd be cheaper. I've, the thing is, the problem with PC gaming is it's such a kerfuffle with like having to manually update stuff errors servers cheaters whereas if it's all self-contained on a console yeah. you don't get all those problems 
Yeah, I can see that's definitely uh, like I I do PC game occasionally, but I much prefer my Xbox because of ease. Yeah, it's and so because convenient. I'm old. And as 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 my life, you know, as, as my gaming life has gone on, I've always played on console, like from SNES to now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's to the future. A, yeah. So it's more of a habit, but. You know, the moment I have to start, because I'm not very tech savvy, the moment I have to start switching things out is when I'll be like, Ugh. It does, it becomes just playing a multiplayer game. It's such a pain in the ass searching servers and, you know, you have to, then you get in a lobby and it's somebody's in there who's got a mod that lets them do something that you can't stop. And it's just, it gets too much where you're just like, I just want to sit down for 10 minutes from my console and just play a game. We probably just upset a lot of PC players there, but um, I've got respect think... for PC players that they put up with that crap. I love PC <laughs> people, don't hate me. Yeah, but they also get gorgeous, gorgeous graphics. They do. That's, that's yeah, what you, I that's think the if sacrifice that's, and the reward. Yeah, I mean, I can easily see them doing something stupid. Like, maybe not now, but maybe in the next generation. It's like, yeah, here's the consumer level version of our Xbox. Here's a, if you want to be more powerful version of the Xbox. And then they could have a ridiculous like version of the Xbox, you know what I mean? I'll be, I'd and, be worried that they'll be diluting them. So, you know, they'll they'll be making it a bit too confusing for the. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't want that. Co- I just I wouldn't mind if there was two. Like, there's the what we've got now, Xbox One, and then they said, right, here's the new system where every Xbox year 1. or so, 5. yeah, we're just going to release like an upgrade that you can take out, plug in, you can send your old upgrade back, and you know, that'd be, just that'd be pretty it. cool. But to be honest, I think what they're they're actually what we'll see. What they're actually talking about here is, is we're going to see more cross buys between yeah. PC and it's. I don't think it's going to be anything fantastical anytime soon. Anyway, I think it's going to be more cross plays where you can play online with people. Well, what I did uh, hear as well is that um, if I can't remember where I read it, I think it was the Guardian, but they said that if you buy a game on Windows Ten, you then yeah, get, you get, you get an Xbox One copy as well. So if you've got a mate who's a PC gamer, get him to buy a game on the PC and then you can get it free on your Xbox One. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for things like that, but hey, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, um, the future is in our hands. So yeah, that was that was Ross's news. Yeah, I think I think um, Minecraft is always co- also coming to the Oculus, which surprises absolutely no one. I I, I didn't even know that wasn't announced. Yeah, and, like, Minecraft <laughs> will just go to whatever it can. Like and make you put, millions. They, if they ever make a Wi-Fi enabled toaster, you can damn well bet Minecraft will be on that fucking thing. <laughs> My, well, there's a fridge that everything. has Wi-Fi. Has it got Minecraft? I bet they're working on a fucking fridge edition. To be fair, that'd be quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> like you open you your fridge and you have to arrange your, rearrange things in your fridge it's not to f- do stuff in the game. There's not a 3DS Minecraft, though, is there? Not yet. Wow, that's a big market they're missing out. I'm surprised. Maybe there's an NX free uh, Minecraft there. Ah, uh, let's not go down that route. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have more information next week with the NX. And s- no, we won't. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> we will. No one else will. We're just going <laughs> to... Yeah. <laughs> we'll just, we're going to announce yeah. it next week. The world exclusive on <laughs> Out of Lives. Next week, we're talking the NX. Hey, guys, I can't do it next week, so you fucked. <laughs> you guys have to make it all up. Um, no, I can't do it next week. It's fine. Um, I'm just talking to myself now. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a pretty <laughs> quick episode. And Ross, we don't know where you are. I guess we're all assuming he's on GTA right now. Yes. Um, they love you. We love you, and we will light a candle for you. Score will, I won't. Honor of your loss. No, I'm going to come online and shoot you now. Yeah, I'm going to go murder him. Yeah, I'm going to down in my car. Um, we will make sure our internet works next week, though. Yeah, <laughs> because so apologize for apologize apologies for um this week's substandard episode. Although we us three, the holy trinity of the Out of Lights podcast, have saved it. We tried. Um, y- which, well, we tried. And yeah, so Kev, you got anything to plug? Yeah, just find me on Twitter at Don't Shoot Tarny and listen out for our Game of Thrones podcast coming soon. Out of Frames, was that? Yeah, out, of frames. Frames. It out, like of out of Frames. frames. Yeah. Out of Frames. Um, <laughs> out of Frames. I, I am no, so what, Kev, legit hyped point? to start that. I am as well. I've been, you know, I've been planning it for weeks. So I'm just super mm. excited. Mm, and I, I, I'm, I'm going to start watching Game of Thrones again. Get on that season five. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Suppose I'll I'll rewatch it and then come on and talk shit about it. Get no. out. Okay. Now, Dave, have you got anything to plug? Uh, no, just the usual stuff. Make sure you listen to all our other fabulous podcasts starring fabulous people. Um, who I'm not going to go through it every week. Out of nowhere, out yeah. of 
reality, reality out of ideas, out of, ideas, out out of, of a crossfire. Yeah. I was going to say the X Files is a joke. And um, if, if you did miss Ross this week, feel free to watch him on that substandard podcast, My Xbox and Me. <laughs> <laughs> the shit! He's throwing shit! It's oh. going to be insane! And uh, tune in uh, to My Xbox and Me where Corey will retaliate. <laughs> I'm sure he's with... got. He's, he told me he's, he's not going to be afraid. He's just going <laughs> to spit like this. Corey's going to pull out a piece and just bat, pop it. Yeah, all, 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 all he said was he, he's going to retaliate, but he, he's not going to mention my daughter. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, he can't say anything bad about your wife as I did. So, yeah. Well, wife to be. Fiance, Hashtag they call that, back. Scott. That's <laughs> yeah. the word you're looking for. What was that? Well, uh, it's called a fiance. That's the word you're looking for. Wife to be is not a thing. Anyway, Scott, <laughs> did you have anything to plug? I do. I have uh, my Twitter it's at Scott Seven Ninety Four. Uh, at Out of Lives Pod on Twitter for the podcast. Um, also, my YouTube channel, Scott Seven. I released a video called February in a Revu- in review. It has sixteen dislikes. Please go and dislike that video. <laughs> and if you've got any hate mail for us, send it to uh, podcast at outlives dot net. Awesome, and that wraps us up this week. Sorry again for the technical difficulties, but we have been out of life. Ciao, Bella. And we're sorry. You're in tune to Out of Lives. <laughs> www.outoflives.net Who can't handle the truth?